All right, and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and also on YouTube if you're watching this video later on over there. Um, for our next deck, uh, which is going to be Orzov Unity. So this was a, a donation deck. Um, if you a deck that's been playing some Orzov, kind of basically an Orzov midrange. I think that's kind of a, a, a pretty good name for it. Um, the viewer submitted with uh, Orzov Unity. Um, so basically what we have here is we have kind of a hodgepodge of uh, Orzov cards. I'm, uh, I'm pretty worried about our, our curve, uh, especially how, as you can, like the Kaya's Wrath and the Conqueror's Galleons also cost four. So we're going to be having kind of just a whole lot of fours. Um, so with only like the six cards total to, to play on turn two that, that affect anything, uh, you know, could certainly be a problem. Like, look like we're going to be pretty slow and everything, but um, we do have some good cards whenever we're behind. Kaya's Wrath is, is you know, good at cleanup a battlefield whenever we're behind. Uh, Shalai, Seraph of the Scales, and Lyra um, are very good at uh, blocking whenever you're, whenever you're behind. Um, we have some good removal with Mortify and Contempt. Um, some synergy between Alenda and Tesa. That are kind of chilling in here also. We have the demon that can sacrifice a creature. Um, you know, we can sack like the Alenda, for example, and make a bunch of uh, vampires, or we can sack an afterlife creature. And we kind of have like a whole lot of things. The, 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 certainly like the weirdest card uh, in the deck is Conqueror's Galleon, if you haven't seen this vehicle before. So Conqueror's Galleon is a 210 um, that does require a crew cost of four. So you have to have like four power to crew it. So like a Seraph of the Scales can crew it. Um, this card was amazing in Ixalan Limited because being like when you're a 210, you're not dying in combat basically uh, with 10, 10 toughness. Um, and so all the Conqueror's Galleon has to do is attack. Uh, it doesn't have to hit the opponent or anything, but as long as it attacks, um, then, uh, then it will transform. And then it turns into Conqueror's Foothold, which is a pretty sweet land, um, allowing you to, add, you know, it's a land, it adds a colorless mana, um, and it has some abilities there, as you can see on the card. Um, so it can kind of give you a little bit of reach. So, yeah, our deck's kind of all over the place. Uh, we have a high curve. You know, like, that's what our, our curve looks like. So we have some things I'm a little worried about, but um, we get to play with some different cards here. And so playing with some different cards is... <clears throat> always fun and it's kind of nice to see different card interactions um so that's that's what we're uh, gonna go ahead and try let's go with orzov unity brew around galleon galleon's a difficult card to brew around it was not there's, there is certainly a little bit of a payoff, but has some hard restraints. Like, crew four is a lot. You know, so you have to play, like, you want to be playing, like, four power creatures. It's tough. Um, the Bloodfast is just kind of in here as just, like, a, a solid card. Um, I don't think it's... It's not something that we need to particularly... Uh, like flip immediately or anything like that. All right, let's get some black mana. I guess yeah. So I guess like adding in green sources for Shalai would probably make the mana base a little more inconsistent. Uh, Astro, your question about Orzov Knights. I honestly don't quite remember, honestly. I just, I honestly don't quite remember the last time I, I played Orzhov Knights and, and how it was and stuff. I'm, I'm sorry. All right, so no black mana for us, unfortunately. Um, we actually have more, there we go. I was gonna say we have more black mana in the deck than white. Um, all right, if they're gonna have a counter spell. I'd want them to counter the Tesa. 
And it's kind of between Tessa and Kaya. I mean, Seraph, Seraph is our best card. Kaya's good against this Chemist's Insight, but they just have the mana just to be able to cast that Chemist's Insight in response. But it's, it's also good against Search. I'm going to play the Tessa. No, Timmy, I haven't seen Infinisqui. I don't know. I don't know what that is. Okay, tapped out opponent. So tap it, opponent tapped out means I get to resolve Seraph. I think is the, I think Seraph is more important to resolve than Kaya. Even you know. Even though Kaya is good and would be able to eat the insights and help shrink this Searcher's Kanta, but just having the, the pressure and having the Seraph in play is more important. IMO. Oh, that's true. It would have cost five mana to, to insight on my turn when I had that Tithe Taker. I, I uh, was not... Um, placing that under consideration. Hmm. Five cards now. Let's. All right. It's getting a little risky. For the this has Kanta flipping. It's getting a little risky now. I heard you had some dead things that needed to stay dead. Pack your bags and hit the road. So it's unfortunate that you know, like next turn if we draw a land, we could have been able to double spell. Um, if I would have played a four drop. <laughs> yep. Yeah, this Hawkeye's favorite spot. He's just right here, chilling right in front of me. Something vanished. Funny, that's what I do. you got yeah Kaya has some good voice lines I like that honey that's what I do we're looking pretty good here with the power of Sarah for the scales um, you know, getting mortified before and then making two tokens, and now we have a new Seraph out there. Seraph is just an incredible, incredible card. We are looking pretty good. Kaya's done her job of keeping Ascanta at bay. Yeah, we are playing against a, a budget Esper control deck. Yeah, with the meandering rivers and uh, and things. Hmm. Well, I guess that's a win for Orzov Unity. Um, Prospector, Bloodfast, Bugler, so it's Mardu. Final parting, huh? And acquisitions. Dang. So you've been playing that deck, Timmy? Yeah, the Afterlife 2 is certainly better than I imagined it would be. Um, so this is what I was talking about with like, our problem with like all of our fours. See, we have two lands, and then we have four, 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 five, and another four over here. Um, you know, pretty worried about that. Our our game that we played the last time, we, we did have the... You know, some tight takers, um, which were pretty nice, uh, you know, having our two mana spell. Yeah, so this this is a problem. It's just all of our cards cost four. Um, like we're not even close to playing anything. We at least have a Kaya's Wrath. We have the, the one of Kaya's Wrath. So we can... 
can get there if we get some lands. But this this is gonna happen a, a non-zero amount of times with this with a deck with this kind of curve, is you're just gonna have stuff like this. Where you don't get to play. Um So our opponent kept the land war elves on top and then didn't cast land war elves. What's the point of keeping the land war elves on top if you're just gonna have it sit in your hand? What are you doing, opponent? How this thing goes is up to you. You can't stop nature. Alright, we land. Hmm, another four. Yeah, unfortunately, because we don't have no the land, we did have to put a contempt like to the bottom. So, dealing with this Vivian. We, we really wanted to land there and be able to play Seraph. Seraph, pres Seraph pressures uh, Vivian pretty well. Oh, we can't even cast Kaya's Wrath because of Archer of Um So if I shock, we go to seven. And then we're taking lethal. They just minus the... Yeah. Can't. All right, so we got Honor Guards in the, in the sideboard. Um... We probably want our sideboard sweepers too, which sideboard sweepers are kind of tough against. No, we would go to no. They just minus Vivian and then like the. Or I guess we could go. To, yeah, if we yeah with the two tokens because we can. I guess yeah. I guess I forgot about like splitting them up. So yeah, we could have gone to one. But to to what end? Um, so at that point, they don't even have to minus, yeah. Could go to one, but to what end? We have, so, yeah, we're bringing in the extra sweepers. Sweepers with honor guard is not as great. I honestly just don't know really what to do here. I mean, I think we just have to take out, like, you know, Conqueror's Galleon and Tesa and Alenda um, these cards just aren't very impactful. But I don't know, that's, that's sort of like, so sort of like, especially Tesa and Alenda. I could see Alenda being good with these sweepers. I mean, I, I want to bring in drill bits and, um, I'll play this this Alenda. Yeah, the opponent could think Esper Control. Okay, we can try this. Certainly had some awkward hands with this Arch of Arazka. All right, we need Seraph next turn and Seraph to take over. Seraph, you're you're our only hope. Sultai is just king of the mid-range decks, um, and with our 
kind of janky all CMC for deck. This is just not a matchup I I think that we want to see. You know, I think we weren't going to want to see other other matchups. All right, so find finality. Um, that's really not that bad for us here because I don't need to cast. That's a that's a great one. I don't need to cast Kaya's Wrath. Finality doesn't do a whole lot for the opponent. It you know kills a couple of our things, but Lyra and Seraph can win this. Those two cards can win. If our opponent's other two cards are just kind of dead. anyway. We can discard it. Beasts are much more reliable than humans. Sometimes restoration means retribution. So this is really problematic. Um, not only, you know, like we have to kill the Vivian, which that's 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 not really the problem. But the problem is now this, like that's like the perfect timing for them for this Vivian, because now their third ch chapter of Eldest Reborn. Is gonna get back Lyra, and that's that's the huge Not problem. Dead I don't, yet. Defeating Lyra is gonna to be tough. So we're we're gonna be able to activate our Arch of Araska at least to draw another card. Well, the first Vivian was really bad. The second one is Would you like to see what's left of even school? worse. Balance comes. Um exclamation point decks can get you the Esper deck list from before. This is bad. Some jade lights chilling over there. Kai just doesn't do anything at this point. <laughs> Except for get to rest. Cool. I've seen things that would break someone like you. So yeah, it does look like this is just straight up green black, not Sultai. Really like these fine finalities.
All right, Lyra down. And Vivian down. Ah, not again. So now can we beat all of this with just two Seraphs? Unlikely. It's not really the move of somebody that wants to play Finality. Hmm. Yeah, the problem is even if we find the rats, they have the, the two finds. Okay. Thirteen. So they attack with everything besides Wild Growth Walker next turn. That's going to be 7, 13, 16. Um, if they just attack with everything, I guess that's just 13. So actually, all they need to do is attack out, and I'm dead. Okay, well now I have multiple blockers. So now they did have lethal by just attacking out, so now they don't have lethal anymore. But we're still, you know, really dead. Hmm. Do not want to attack out. Like, I'm just not really picturing a way I can win this. Uh, trying to figure it out. Um, you know, like with the blocking and everything. I, I'm not really picturing how we're going to win. So I require a couple wraths. Yeah, I'm just... I'm dead next turn anyway, so might as well... Might as well take a little bit more. I need a couple of rats in a row. What card or cards do you think you underestimated? That's not a rat. Do you think you underestimated the most from the new set? Um, Hydroid Crisis? Underestimated that card. Um... That's the number one card I underestimated. Um, Seraph of the Scales I underestimated. Yeah, that's a couple that come to mind. Yeah, and we had... I think we had three mass removal spells in the deck at the point but yeah we, we had to draw that and like they they were able to get their creatures back so we'd have to draw like two mass removal spells basically hello yeah a lot of a lot of viewers in here on this sunday thanks everybody for being in here if you're kind of newer to the the stream here this is what um, I do each and every day. This is my full-time job of streaming here, and so you can always find me each and every day from 3 to 10 Eastern Time. Play four standard decks a day, like we're doing right now. Um, perfect time for Bloodfast. Perfect time. Great draw there.
And I'm going to draw a card to try to get land drops. I need to get Bant Familiar up on the up on YouTube. <laughs> and he lands. The best case scenario is we pay two, draw a card, and it's a land, and we get to play the land. Worst case scenario is we pay pay to draw a card and it's not a land and we have to just discard. The medium scenario is just throwing out this mentor of the meek. Uh, no, I don't. I don't think. I don't think thinks of, of foresight's a very good card uh, for standard. I mean, I, th I think it's. I think it's kind of like a below average card. All right, we'll go with the medium result. It's not the best, it's not the worst. Just just average. Ah, we would have hit the land. Alright, well, I'm not playing this Conqueror's Galleon to never play it, right? I don't know. What do y'all think? Should I just throw this card out there? The, the problem is, is this is Crew 4. If this was Crew 2 and I could crew it with this Mentor of the Meek, it would be better. But it's Crew 4, so I have to resolve something else. I mean, the best the best chance of winning is playing Seraph. I guess I'll just go for the best chance of winning. But this would be this would be a good card to flip and be able to start, you know, pay four draw card. I don't know, it's real slow. But yeah, the the best play towards winning the game is certainly Seraph of the Scales. The spicy play is playing the galle Galleon. Don't need to worry about Settle. Um, <clears throat> one white mana up. like to target my own Seraph of the Scales. So we kill that, we get our two 1-1s, one we get to draw two cards with Mentor of the Meek. And it makes it a little more challenging for our opponent. Because um, yeah, it certainly seems like our opponent has to ferry that they're wanting to play um, for how they took the Play Crafter uh, earlier with the Thought Erasure. Hit green hat. But they're... Don't have mana for Teferi yet. Mentor of the Meek doing Mentor of the Meek job.
Go, Kaya, go. I like a good fight. Notice I didn't say fair. I'm sorry, was that dear to you? I know the Goblet Shrine pains us, but I kind of want to play it because our opponent uh, knows about it. Even though we could we could not take the two by by uh, playing the planes. So they have the two cards in exile right now. Um. Alright, hit him down to four. Let's see if they have another Kai's Wrath. I think. I don't know. Kai closing it down from eight. I thought it was just easier for Shalai to close it down. And there we go. Alright. That Blood Fast that we hit was perfect timing for that Blood Fast. All right, so vanguards are coming on in here. Same with duress and drill bit. Um, I do like contempt as well. Um, could see playing this field of ruin for Ascanta. Let's see what, what we have to take out. We have um, the galleons. We have where is there? There's Kai's wrath. Can come on out. Um, so this is 64. Can trim. Tesa, Shalai, Demon. Yeah, I don't want to sacrifice a creature. Um, yeah, they would have just played... Yeah, playing Teferi and tucking Shalai may have been a better option than the Eldest Reborn. I, I feel like my opponent expected me to... Um, Sacrifice the Shalai instead of the Kaya. Uh, Lyra's not even good. Let's trim Lyra. Um, keeping all the Mortifies. Yeah, how does this look? This looks like a reasonable collection of cards. Esper likes to bring in a bunch of creatures after sideboarding. We'll have these mortifies still for those or for their enchantments. We, we've already seen Eldest Reborn. Now we see they'll have Ascanta. Yeah, I guess I should have brought in Field of Ruin, shouldn't I? Maybe just even replace an, a different land with it. I mean, I, I do want... Um, uh, I do want, like, my Arch of Araska and stuff like that, so I, I still want my other... Uh, Colorless lands that I already um, have. Wow, what a great draw yet again. Do I want a Reaper though? Yeah, I kind of want a Reaper. <laughs> there's already there's a field in the main and a field in the board. So there's there's one in the main and an extra in the board. Ooh, stuck on lands, opponent. And now Bloodfast will be able to refill our hand. We have top decked Bloodfast at very opportune times, both games. No, don't prepare to cry. No, don't prepare to cry. No, Borderland Ranger, no. Okay, not crying.
Draw two cards. Um, so we're definitely attacking for one. We got six mana. So I kind of want to you know, mortify and Kaya. I certainly want to mortify. And do I want to mentor the meek or Kaya? I'm not sure. Let's go Kaya. I can get rid of anything. Lilith's oh, really dead. good at banishing things. So that's three exile cards. And they have two more in in their graveyard to exile currently. Alright, looks like our opponent has contempt. Maybe not. Something vanished. Funny, that's what I do. Attack. A little one one that could. They have a nice even distribution of nice e even distribution of um mana that we we can't really attack anything with field of ruin man alenda's animation is sweet the dusk rose that is just a cool name also i wish this card was better because it is it is awesome the dusk rose and that animation that animation i want to i want to play this card more let's slow this down if only it was better you need to slow down yeah you're all about the slowing down here you get it. You just let me know if you're up for round two. All right, let's draw a card here because we may hit duress. All right, chapel. Um, I think I just want to draw again and play this Kaya over playing another creature. I faced undead. <laughs> This is hardly this my is worst defeat. Play. Yay. Tempted to craft the card just for the animation, right? That's so good. Is playing that main phase and letting me Kaya exile the Chemister's Insight? That's nice. We have drawn really well in these, these couple games. Our, our hodgepodge of cards are coming together. Get that inside out of here. And hit the road. Yeah, hit the road. Um. All right, playing Lyra. And play crafter. Because Kaya ult kills our opponent too, right? Yeah, so they have to deal with Kaya ult. This will grow the Alenda. So they have to discard a card. So whatever their, their one card is left, plus their draw step, those two have to be able to wipe the board and get rid of Kaya. And that's just kind of impossible. Oh, he didn't even let us Kaya ult. And lamb. Right, that 1-1 one, one that we got, that little extra 1-1 one, one from the Tithe Taker gave us a ton of value there. 
All right, nice win for our, our cool little Orzov deck. Got to see, you know, some good cards. You know, just kind of a just some some like randomly good cards. You know, like um, Tithe Taker, Mentor of the Meek, um, was pretty nice at spots. And Seraph, the first game, Kaya doing her thing. Yeah, I will be pretty sad with, with Lyra rotating. Oh no, I didn't want to draw more Seraphs. I wanted to draw... Uh, I want to draw some black mana. Whoa, Amara Tajik? I can get behind this. Is our opponent playing Naya Legends? This Naya Legends? Alright, I need a Field of Ruin, unfortunately. Let's blow up their red source. Hope this slows them down. But we need we need to do that to be able to have a chance at drawing a black mana source for Kaya's Wrath. Yeah, Nia Legends was a, a deck that I was uh, certainly thinking about playing today. I was gonna put it on the list, and I was like, "Well, I'm playing Gruul Dinos. It's like Nia and Gruul." Ugh, didn't get there. I mean, I can, I can like get rid of one thing, but we're taking three, four, five, six. We need that black source for Kai's Wrath. All right, if it is Nia Legends, what are we doing? Definitely want Nova, Wrath, and Contempt, absolutely. Uh, Cry the Carnarium, even though it looked amazing, would have been amazing there. It's not very good against the, the rest of the deck, but maybe they're playing like their own. Like, maybe it's just a different deck. Maybe it's not actually Naya Legends. Um, so maybe I should be playing Cries. I don't really want Kaya. Galleon's obviously out of here. Um... <laughs> we played against all the mono blues earlier. <laughs> we played mono, you know, mono blue three times in that first league, so it, we we saw our share of mono blue. All ready. Yeah, Kaya just doesn't do anything. Just get her out. Oh, I have to I have to put in more cards. Um, drill bits. Yeah, drill bits. My favorite jank planeswalker. Um Huatli. I like both the Huatlis. Yeah, both Huatlis. They're both great. Alright, respectable hand. We got one of our two drops and then a drill bit. I I honestly don't have a good answer for, for Galleon. Um, I don't. I don't really know what the, what's functionality could be. Uh, I don't, I don't really, like, Cinder Vines can deal us a little bit of damage. I'm not going to waste a Mortify on it. Hooray! It is Naya Legends! That is awesome. That is awesome. We don't, we don't play against our same decks here very often. And so yeah, with our opponent bringing in the Cinder Vines, they definitely thought we were, uh, you know, a lot more of a control deck. Hey, Eddie. Um, our deck name is Unity. Um, that's what the creator of the deck named it. 
Oh, you have a fever at the moment? I'm sorry to hear that. Hey, thanks, Jeff. Thanks for the bits. This is awesome. Yeah, I hope Maya comes in the chat after the after the game and lets me know how they're doing with this deck. So I think they've now learned not to bring in the Cinder Vines. I did miss it, the a Wrath. Good call. Good call, I did. Um, I'm not sure this is really a Bloodfast matchup. I wonder if I need Duresses. We are going to get... Oh, man. We are going to get so wrecked by Urza's Ruinous Blast. Yo, I need these Duresses. Yeah, Urza's Ruinous Blast is going to wreck us. All right, I'm actually, maybe I'm just off the rats. Maybe we don't need rats. A little bit of wrath. Hey, Jeff, getting those bits in. Thanks for the cheers. Ugh, Deck, why do you do this? I took... Last game, so to solve your question, I took Lyra instead of Tristani uh, because even though we had the Mortify for Lyra, um, because our Seraphs just get to fly over the um, Seraphs just get to fly, fly over Tristani. If I take Tristani and they have Lyra, and then I and I Mortify the Lyra. If they if they just draw another Lyra, another copy of Lyra though, um, is like definitely a way I could lose. Ooh, aggressive aggressive block. Worried about drill bit. Real aggressive block there. Because basically I I you know Seraph can't get through Lyra and so. Even though I'd have removal for one Lyra, if they had like a second Lyra, uh, that they would be able to draw. That's where it'd be really uh, finding a problem. Yeah, there we go. Unity within the Orzov. There you go. Kaya and Tesa working together. Yeah. That's that's good answer. That's why we're Unity. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the answer there. Demon's big. Our poor opponent, you know, multi five and didn't have land drops, and now they got stuck on land drops yet again. They kept their seven, though. This time. All right, let's go ahead and drill a bit. So Clarion, Shalai, Warlord, Rado. We gotta take that. Um, no, there's not really any color to hit too much here. Um, I guess red and white are the two less dominant colors of them, them already having three green sources. Game's not over yet, opponent. You can 
Oh, they need a land plus a Vivian. So they go... Shalai here. Okay. All they need to do is draw a Vivian, or they can have a big Vow next turn. Yeah, Warlord Rada does let them Vow for a nice big Vow next turn. So this is 6, 7, 8. So uh, we have both dr drill bits and drill bit and duress, um, but uh, they they did found the, they found the Vivian. Fire. See, they said good game in there. They can win this. I mean, they are actually just incredibly far ahead. Um. Because all they have to do, you know, just they have Shalai or Clarion, either one. Come to me. They should probably Clarion, wreck my board, and lifelink the Rada. Thanks for the bits, Jeff. Yeah, I mean, I can't be mad at my opponent top decking a Vivian when they're playing Nia Legends. Can't be mad at that. The wilds are my shield. They got a big Druidic Vow in them. <laughs> nah, you don't need to be mad at irrational things. That's cool. That card blocks. A little blocking. Feel the wrath of Scala. No, the wrath of Scala. Whatever that is. Oh, they. You should pump the Rada. If the opponent pumps the Rada, it's lethal because the Rada gets trample. Yeah, you better cast that Vow next turn, opponent. Or this turn. Next turn, you better cast that. Alright, cast the Vow. 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 Yeah, get, get another land drop. Meet my newest friend. Yeah, definitely better to lose this, to this than Esper. The rest of the bits? Well, thanks, Jeff. Thank you so, thank you so much. Come on, cast that. Do it. No. Why can't I tell my opponent to cast their spell? All right, cool. Now cast your spell. Vow, vow, do it, do it, hooray, all right, seven, here we go. What do you got, what do you got? <laughs> Let's tear this place apart. Four lands, two Lyras, and another Vivian. The wilds are my shield. All right, Seraph, you can do it. Go, Seraph, go. <laughs> yeah, I don't have a cast vow emote. <laughs> I know, right? That's I was looking. I was like, "Where's the cast vow emote?" All 
All right, so we went two and two with Orzov Unity. Yeah, lost to my baby, Nia Legends. We were so close. Yeah, that was a really good game. Like, we, we had lethal there, like, the next turn. But then the top deck, Vivian. Great draw for the opponent. Came in and got us. Hey, what's up, track team? So, awesome deck for the opponent. And pretty sweet deck here for us as well. So that's Orzov Unity. Uh, so we went two and two. Um, looking at this deck, I, I'm still just pretty concerned about our um, curve. Um, we saw that happen quite a bit of us just have a, a whole lot of expensive spells and not, not things to do early. Um, games that we drew Tithe Taker or Argos Bloodfast, like right when we needed to, were a lot better than games that we didn't. Conqueror's Galleon. It's just not really, it's just not really a card that's worth it. This is just not not a, a constructed power level card. Crew force is, is so much to crew, and and the payoff is is pretty tough. It's it's pretty hard to like play against another deck that's you know, um, you know like think about Sultai kind of thing. Like it's just hard for for you to be able to basically take turn four off. You have to just take an entire turn off to play this card. And then after you take your turn off, you you also, following that up, you have to take a creature that you have that has at least four power or multiple creatures that have four power and have them take a turn off to crew this thing. And then after all of that, you know, it's you have you get a land um, that can do some some valuable things, but very very slowly. A big another big mana requirement put all that together is you just can't really do that in standard that's just not a realistic ask of a standard deck <clears throat> um w weatherlight would make more sense as a vehicle i guess but neither of them really make sense in this deck honestly um i would rather just have cast down i'd rather have duress i'd rather have drill bit i'd rather have a danto vanguard um more seeker squires uh I'd rather just have any any kind of cards like that instead of the Conqueror's Galleon. Um, I think we kind of have too many colorless lands for trying to cast Kaya's Wrath. Kind of seem like that. Um, you know, like casting Kaya's Wrath was a problem. <clears throat> um, I. I've played Tesa a few times, and I've I've never been impressed with this card either. I don't think this is a card that's necessary for the deck. I I would not play Tesa. Um, again, just like that's Tesa and Conqueror's Galleon. Like those are four slots on this four mana slot. They can easily just go <clears throat> to cheaper things, to things like Adanto, Vanguard, and Duress, and Drill Bit. I mean, you can just play those cards main deck. Those cards are all good. Um, again, cast down for removal. Um, Honor Guard is, is slightly weird in the deck considering we have like Mentor the Meek and Seeker Squire that don't really play well with it so it's it's slightly weird Mentor the Meek also it, it did some stuff for us it's good with Afterlife Tokens I didn't hate it I'm not sure if it's better than Midnight Reaper but I didn't hate it um, we didn't get to really do anything that cool with Alenda, but I don't necessarily hate Alenda. Um, Demon was, Demon was fine. I mean, this card is honestly really not that bad. Like, 6-6 six, six is just huge. Um, you know, it's just bigger than anything else in the air. I don't mind that one so much. So there we go. So that's Orzov Unity. So thank you for the donation deck there. Um, if you're watching this video later on on YouTube, um, one, thanks for watching. But two, hope you hit that subscribe button. And I will see you for the next video.